Bismillah here Rahman near Rahim. Jihad is not terrorism. Ghulam Ahmad Pawe. Translated by Shahid Chowdhury. Jihad. Ghulam Ahmad Pawe. Disclaimer. The following work is a translation and as such any ambiguity in the text is the responsibility of the translator and not the original author. 1. Propaganda. Propaganda is an art perfected throughout the ages by people like Goebbels, the propaganda secretary of Hitler. Goebbelian truth, as we all know it to be, is based on the principle that a lie uttered a hundred times becomes gospel truth. How much this theory has been successful in varying fields is hard to measure, but it has certainly played a vital role in maligning Islam. A gloss over the pages of history furnishes ample evidence as to how Islam and its message have been distorted by propaganda. Europe's Revenge. During the course of her history Europe were united on one platform only once. And, unfortunately for the human world, this unity led to barbarous crusades against Islam. Defeat in these wars was a soul-racking and heart-burning shock for Europe. With the passage of time these hurt feelings have somewhat been assuaged. But there is still a deep scar in her subconscious. This splinter has always troubled her, and she has always fretted and fumed to avenge this defeat. There are mainly two ways of taking revenge. One is to tread the path of Genghis and Halegu and thereby spill blood on the pages of history. But this style from the Dark Ages is considered out of fashion these days. During the days of Genghis, man had not as yet learned the art of diplomacy. He did not know to sugarcoat his malicious intentions. He did not know to hide his sharpened nails in soft paws. He did not know how to cover his acts of tyranny and oppression with the silken veil of welfare and development. Whatever he did, he did openly, declared his intentions and then acted. But man has changed. He has progressed in intellect and wisdom, and in knowledge and vision. As such, today, an open mitigation of his lust for blood would amount to stupidity. Now the most successful person is he who exploits others without letting them know that they have been taken for a ride. He snatches the essential resources of life in such a subtle manner that nobody suspects him to be a robber. In the guise of mentor and reformer he may destroy an entire community while the victims remain unaware as to what is happening to them. Oppression and destruction committed by the people of the Age of Ignorance was like a whirlwind that comes with grating roar. Tremulous cadence, and whose uproar and tumult even the blind can see and the deaf can hear. But the moves of a deceitful person, in the present age of intellect and reason, are like a calm river in which there is neither uproar nor agitation of waves. It is a river that remains as silent as a church with neither commotion nor buffeting of waves. But deep under its surface lurk dragons and alligators ready to pounce upon and engulf entire communities, while eyes do not see them and ears do not hear them. This serene and subtle method of obliteration and squandering is propaganda. Propaganda is an invisible fire. It quietly reduces all conviction and sagacity to ashes with no smoke so as to warn of the imminent danger. Propaganda is a silent and organized conspiracy which slowly but gradually, without noise or tumult, changes the nature and character of things in such a manner that one without realizing loses one's capacity to differentiate between beneficial and harmful between good and bad, and between virtuous and evil. As a result, the conspirators become so powerful that they can make one accept what they like and that too in the manner they like. Thus propaganda becomes a trick of such manipulators as Samiri, the biblical character, who successfully persuaded Israelites to revert to idol. Half. Worship in the absence of Moses. Owing to this, individuals as well as nations become worse than cattle. The Quran states, They have hearts wherewith they understand not, they have eyes wherewith they see not, they have ears wherewith they hear not.
I. E. Despite having their own faculties of thinking, seeing and hearing they look up to others for guidance. As such they are not human beings. They are as the cattle, nay, but they are worse. 7. 179. The Picture of Islam. Capitalist Europe used this trick of Samiri in order to avenge her defeat at the hands of Islam. She used the propaganda weapon in such an organized but quiet manner that Islam appeared to the world what it definitely is not. With the help of the pen and a rumor-mongering campaign so dreadful a picture of Islam has been drawn that even Muslims themselves will shiver to the core if they happen to see it. Consequently, today, wherever in the civilized and cultured world Islam is mentioned, Bloodstained scenes of murder and plunder, death and destruction, oppression and tyranny, injustice and despotism appear one by one as if one is watching a motion picture. Gangs of savage and bloodthirsty wild folks, spears and swords in hand, are coming from all sides like floods of misfortune. Who are these barbarous people? Are they jinn, horrible demons or giants? Amidst slogans of Allahu Akbar, they are spitting venom and shedding blood. Is this divine wrath? This rage of fury is destroying culture and civilization, fairness and justice, continence and chastity, religion and faith. Besides, one by one they are uprooting flowers, fruits and shadowy trees. Whatever knowledge and talent thousands of years of human effort and inquiry has earned is being wiped off like chaff and rubbish. Prayers of the oppressed, crying and weeping of orphans, lamentations and plaints of widows are not eliciting a divine response. O God of this dreadful community! Art thou doors closed for the poor of this world? This unusual calamity is turning human habitations into deserts, settlements into ruins, libraries into ashes, lofty buildings and palaces, the symbols of culture and civilization, into ruins. Heaps of broken crosses, truckloads of sacred beads, deserted temples and demolished churches can be seen everywhere. No one is at peace or safe. Neither a Brahmin nor a Christian monk, neither women nor children. Some have been killed, others have been taken captive and are being whipped by barbarous sheikhs so as to force them to the slave market and thereby sell respectable human beings for a princely sum. Ideology of peace and security. Such is the picture of Islam that has been drawn with the weapon of propaganda. And these self-styled painters of hate have deliberately ignored the fact that the fundamental teaching of Islam leads man to the path of peace. O people of the book there has come to you from Allah the light of truth, and a perspicuous book which is unambiguous in its teachings and through this book Allah will open ways of peace and security for those who lead their lives in accordance with the divine laws. Opening parenthesis. 5. 15 to 16. The Book of Allah leads humanity to the door of peace and safety. For them, who took the straight path ordained by Allah, is an abode of peace with their sustainer, and he is their protecting friend because of what good acts they do. 6. 128. It is the same abode of peace and security, to which Allah invites them and Allah calls to an abode where everything is safe and protected. And whoever desires success, Allah guides him to the straight path. 10. 25. In that abode the objective of all ideas and deeds and endeavor and inquiry is a paradise of safety. And doubtlessly, people who lead their lives according to the divine laws will enjoy the bliss of gardens and water springs and it would be said to them, enter these gardens in peace and security. 15. 45-46. Against disorder, one of the attributes of Allah, who revealed Islam, is al momin which means one who guarantees universal peace. Another attribute of Allah is as salam which means peace. In fact, the word Islam itself means peace. And its followers are called Momin i. E. 
people responsible for establishing peace. Thus a Muslim is one who follows in totality the eternal laws of Allah as enshrined in the Holy Quran so as to establish peace and prosperity not only for himself but also for the whole of humankind. We have seen that the fundamental message of Islam is peace and security. Therefore, it declares that those who indulge in corruption, disorder and breaches of peace deserve divine wrath. In this context see Surah Ar-Rad where it states that those who fulfill their pledge to Allah and do not breach their covenant. For them is the recompense of a final, happy abode and they would be extended salutations of peace and security. On the other hand, for those who break the covenant with Allah and create disorder and mischief in the land, is the terrible home. Without doubt. For them awaits gardens of perpetual bliss. They shall enter there along with the righteous, among their fathers, their spouses and their offspring and malika. Forces of nature. Shall enter unto them from every gate. With the salutation. Peace unto you for whatever trials you have endured with steadfastness. Now how excellent is the final home of these people. But those who break the covenant of Allah after ratifying it, and cut asunder those things which Allah has commanded to be joined, and create disorder and mischief in the land. For them is the terrible home. 13. 23-25. The Quran mentions in explicit terms that a faith that spreads evil and destruction on earth is unacceptable to Allah. When these people gain power then their entire effort is to spread chaos and mischief in the land. They destroy crops, cattle and human beings, but Allah does not like what they do. 2. 205. The religion of such people is Fisq and they are Faishchin. Thus they are diametrically opposed to Momen. According to the laws of Allah Fajchin are on the wrong path. Who is a Fasik? A person who breaks the covenant of Allah after ratifying it is a Fasik. A person who severs human relationships by fragmenting humanity into pieces on the basis of unnatural racial or national distinctions is a Fasik. A person who creates disorder and mischief in the land is a fasic. They do not live within the limits prescribed by the divine laws. They cut asunder what Allah has ordered to be joined. With their evil deeds and waywardness. They create chaos and mischief in the land. Indeed they are in the loss. 2. 26-27. The Quran forbids man in unambiguous terms to follow the path of perdition and destruction and openly states. And, listen, after reforming and setting the country in order, do not create disorder and mischief. If you are fearful of losing something or have a desire to gain something, in both the situations, act according to Allah's laws. Allah's Ramat. Means of protection and sources of nourishment is close to those who lead a balanced life in accordance with his laws. 7. 56. Jannah is an abode where one can live in peace and security. As such, the doors of this eternal home are not open to those who adopt the path of waywardness and transgression and thereby create chaos and disorder on earth. The Quran, without mincing words, states. As for the abode of the hereafter we assign it unto those who intend not high-handedness, seek not oppression or corruption and mischief on earth. The sequel is for those who ward off evil and establish peace on earth as per divine laws. 28. 83. The Quran narrates stories of nations dead and communities gone by. Why? The answer is simple. We must learn from history that creating disorder and mischief on earth is a crime against humanity and it results in destruction and obliteration. The biggest charge that the Quran levels against the Pharaoh and his people is that they were evildoers for they divided people into sections and instigated one section to oppress the other. 28. 4 and 28. 14. The Pharaoh was an emblem of tyranny and oppression. His compatriot Karen, Korah of the Bible, 
was an embodiment of capitalism. Along with politics of tyranny, capitalism creates disorder and chaos on earth. Therefore, the Quran states that Karen was also a mufsidi, evildoer. 28. 76 to 77. After narrating the conditions and affairs of the nation's dead, the Quran asks with regret as to why there have not been people in those nations to prevent men from creating chaos and disorder in the earth. 11. 116. The Quran consistently repeats the tales of the rise and fall of the children of Israel so that one may draw lessons from their crimes. As often as they light a fire for war, Allah extinguishes it through other people. Their effort is for spreading disorder in the land and Allah does not like such mufsideen. Designers of Chaos. 5. 64. The Advent of the Last Messenger. Indeed the objective of the advent of the last messenger of God. Muhammad. With the message of Islam. Was to establish an order on earth in accordance with the divine laws because. At that point of time in history, there was complete waywardness, disorder and chaos in thought and action of all the societies of the world. The Quran states. We have sent the messenger of Islam because owing to the misdeeds of the people. Disorder and corruption has engulfed both land and sea. As such, we want that our law of requital should make them taste a part of that which they have earned. It is possible that people, after seeing the destructive results of their misdeeds may repent and return to the straight path of Allah. 30. 41. It is for this reason that the first point in the call of the last messenger refers to prohibiting disorder and chaos in the land of Allah. When they are asked not to spread disorder in society, they retort audaciously. We do not spread disorder. We are those who promote order and peace. Of a surety, they are the ones who spread disorder but they realize it not. Because they do not have a true perception of right and wrong. 2. 11 to 12. Consequently, the Quran regards disorder as the opposite of conviction and good deeds. The two cannot coexist. Shall our law of requital treat those who have Amen, believing in the divine guidance with reason and knowledge, and work deeds of righteousness, the same as those who spread disorder and corruption on earth? Shall our law of requital treat those who obey and follow the laws of Allah the same as those who turn away from the divine path? Remember this is against our law of requital. 38. 28. Reconciliation and peace. These then are the basic principles of Islam. Now should the picture drawn by the propagandists of this system of life be considered a true one? Did this system guarantee peace and security in the world or did it promote disorder and corruption in the world? The answers to these questions are surely in the negative. It has been unfortunate for the human world that the message of peace and reconciliation was considered to be oppressive and tyrannical. The antidote was taken as poison. The sick humanity shunned it believing that her illness was incurable and consequently met a miserable doom. In fact, according to the teachings of the Quran, a Muslim is not allowed to use violence unjustly. And the height of tolerance is that if a non-Muslim abuses him, he cannot respond likewise. For instance, if a follower of another religion uses derogatory words against the respected, last messenger, a Muslim must not pay back in the same coin. The reason. The Quran states that to every nation was sent a messenger and a Muslim has to believe in all of them whether the names and details are mentioned in the last revealed book or not. Therefore, a Muslim has to be cautious. Chances are that the founder of the religion to which that non-Muslim belongs might be a genuine, respected messenger of Allah. Leaving religious figures of non-Muslims aside, the Quran goes to the extent. The deities whom these people associate with Allah are no doubt false. 
This does not mean, however, that you may revile them. You should not revile them lest ignorance in these people revile Allah in retaliation. They adhere to their beliefs because they seem fair to them. The nature of the deeds will become clear to them on the day of reckoning. 6. 109. Equity and justice. Not only are the feelings of others to be respected but also they are to be dealt with in equity and justice. In fact there is unparalleled emphasis on equity and justice in the Quran. It repeatedly asks to judge justly. O Muslims! Allah orders you that you restore deposits to their owners, and, if you judge between people, that you judge justly. 4. 58. And again. O Muslims! Allah orders you to do justice to all. In all matters. And. Apart from this. Make good the deficiencies of others. 16. 90. Truthful testimony. Justice is based on evidence and testimony. In this context the teaching of the Quran is. O Muslims. If you are called upon to testify, do not appear as a witness on behalf of either party, but for Allah. Be truthful in testifying even though it may be against your own selves or your parents and kinfolks, whether the party concerned is rich or poor. Allah safeguards the interests of both the parties. Do not follow your own inclinations lest you should swerve from justice. Do not foist your statements nor show aversion to appearing as a witness. Allah is well aware of what you do. 4. 135. Aiding a culprit the greatest offense. According to the Quran the greatest offense is to help a culprit. In context of the story of Hazrat Musa. Moses. It is stated. Musa said. O oh my sustainer. For as much as you have favored me, I will never more be supporter of the guilty. 28. 17. Justice to enemy. With regards to justice the Quran establishes a very sublime concept. To deal justly with friends is a common human conduct. To be just to strangers is also understandable. But, take a community who is in open enmity with you and is always working to harm you. It does not leave any stone unturned to destroy you. Now this community, or one of its members, comes to you seeking justice. What will you do if the evidence in the case points against your own community or its members? Will you be just? If you are a Muslim, you have to be just in such a situation also. This is called Min Asmal Umuri. The Quran states, O oh Muslims, always stand up for justice in the cause of Allah. Let not the enmity of others towards you deviate you from the path of justice. Always and in all circumstances act justly. This is akin to taqwa. Obeying and following the divine laws. Dot. Remember Allah is aware of all that you do. 5. 8. The maxim, love thy enemy, is mere romantic poetry. It is impossible for a person to love his enemy. It runs against human nature. But justice to the enemy is possible. And all those who are aware of the divine laws know that in order to turn this possibility into a reality you need large-heartedness, magnanimity, courage, strength and sublime character. The Quran helps you to develop these qualities. Deal justly with your enemy is a teaching that is hard to find in any code of law apart from the Quran. Despite these teachings of Islam it is portrayed as a religion of oppression and tyranny. Is it fair and just to do so? No. It is a deliberate act of ignoring truth and justice. Unjust killing. The Quran has introduced the world to the inspiring principle of oneness of God and respect of humanity. This shows that in Islam human life is of immense value. And to kill a person is a grave offense under its constitution. In order to elaborate upon the honor and value it attaches to human life the Quran has adopted a very eloquent and comprehensive style.
On one hand, it gives a universal principle of oneness of God, and on the other, it snubs and reprimands unjust killings of human beings. Unjust murder is such a heinous crime that Allah ordained for the children of Israel that if anyone slew a person, unless it be as a punishment for murder or for spreading disorder in the land, it would be as if he slew the whole mankind. On the other hand if anyone saved a life it would be as if he saved the life of the whole mankind. 5. 32. Blood money. It is possible that, despite all these prohibitions, one might accidentally kill a person. To deal with such a situation the Quran lays down a life-saving and just principle called Jesus, I. E. Punishment proportionate to the crime. Murder may be with or without intent. In the case of the former the punishment is death. No blood money. Or, depending upon the nature of the crime, a punishment less severe than the maximum penalty. 4. 93. In other words, the punishment should be commensurate with the crime. 42. 40. 17. 33. If the heirs of a victim voluntarily, or out of good will, wish to forego the blood money, or a part thereof, they have the right to do so. 17. 33. In such a situation it is necessary that the culprit carry out the terms of the agreement faithfully and with good grace. If he violates the agreement he should be punished severely. Robbery and looting.